Good morning and welcome. This is uh, Salem Lutheran Church in Indianapolis, and I am Pastor James Capers, and we are here to worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. If you are listening uh, to this as you are in your, uh, your living room or you are listening to this in anywhere um, around uh, uh, the country or in the parking lot, we do welcome you to this time of worship. Uh, for those of you who are here for the first time, um, we are a uh, Eucharistic community, so uh, during this worship we will have both word and sacrament. And so if you would like to um, commune with us, we ask that you just simply get your bread and your fruit of the vine and participate with us so that we might be able to receive from the Lord himself. We're going to begin our service with the brief order for confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who forgives all our sins, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Let us pray. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You know, as you think this past week, perhaps there are some um, actions, some thoughts, some words, some deeds for which you need God's forgiveness. And so I would ask that you would just simply reflect on them right now so that when we confess together, you can have those things in mind. And so let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name, amen. Well, my friends, in the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for you, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Please repeat after me. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Lord of the feast, you have prepared a table before all peoples, poured out your life with abundance. Call us again to your banquet. Strengthen us by what is honorable, true and just and pure, and transform us into a people of righteousness and peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Um, today's lesson comes from Philippians chapter 4, starting with verse 1. My brothers and sisters, whom I love and long for, my joy, my crown, stand firm in the Lord in this way, my beloved. I urge you, oh dear, and I urge Sectir to be the same mind in the Lord. 
Yes, and I ask you also, my loyal companion, help these women, for they have struggled beside me in the work of the gospel, together with Clement and the rest of the co-workers whose names are in the book of life. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with the thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Jesus Christ. Finally, beloved, whatever it is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, um, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing the things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, and the God of peace will be with you. This ends the reading. Hallelujah. This is the Lord from whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in God's salvation. The Holy Gospel is written in Matthew chapter 22, beginning at verse 14. And Jesus spoke again to them in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like a king who prepared a wedding banquet for his son. He sent his servants to those who had been invited to the banquet to tell them to come, but they refused to come. And then he sent some more servants and said, Tell those who have been invited that I have prepared my dinner. My oxen and fatted cattle have been butchered and everything is ready. Come to the wedding banquet. But they play, paid no attention and went off one to his field, another to his business. The rest seized his servants, mistreated them, and killed them. The king was enraged. He sent his army and destroyed those murderers and burned their city. And then he said to his servants, the wedding banquet is ready, but those I invited did not deserve to come. So go to the street corners and invite the banquet to the banquet, anyone you can find. And so the servants went out in the streets and gathered all the people they could find, the bad as well as the good. And the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came to see the guests, he noticed a man who was not wedding, wearing wedding clothes. He asked, how did you get in here without wedding clothes, my friend? The man was speechless. And then the king told the attendants, tie him hand and foot and throw him outside into the darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are invited, but few are chosen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we ask in this moment that you would uh, cause us to be able to hear your voice. And we ask, oh God, that you would um, have us to be able to respond to your invitation that we may desire to do what you have called us to do. We pray this in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. This morning, we're talking about the invited and the chosen. Three want ads. Want ad number one. Carmel, Indiana based call center is searching for a human resource manager to manage all local human resource activities. This Position develops, implements, and, exec and, and executes human resources, business strategies, and programs. As the human resource manager, 
You will provide counseling and guidance in support of key business initiatives and a day-to-day -day operational services. Want ad number two. Come join the exciting Nordstrom Restaurant Division. We are currently looking for an enthusiastic, motivated, flexible, uh, flexible individual for our cafe at Fashion Valley to fill the position of sous chef slash manager in training. Want add number three. Are you searching for a long-term temporary position? One that offers a variety of tasks and excellent pay in a uh, convenient downtown location with paid parking? Then call or email us to get started. Requirements? Strong mathematical and analytical skills, excellent oral and written skills, good computer skills with knowledge of Excel spreadsheets, and the ability to multitask different assignments. We'll have to go through a background check. Please call or email immediately. Now these were actual want ads. The 50 to 60 word ads contain the desires of employers to fill a position. These business reps or, or headhunters were looking for people who wanted workers. They were looking for people who perhaps were looking for a career, a career in management, a career in the hospitality industry, a career in temporary work that needed writing skills. As I looked at these ads, I began to think about the people who will apply. They would send in their resumes. They would try to put the best spin on their background. I remember looking at a resume that was written by my own daughter. And at the time, she was looking on the internet every single week. You see, the invitation had gone out. She was looking for a position that seemed to match her skills. She had been a conference planner, and so she was well, well organized. She had created administrative tools to organize and follow up work. And during that period that she was not working, she had the habit of every single Thursday emailing her uh, resumes to several companies that could use her skills. And one thing that I learned about my daughter, she was consistent. Once in a while, she had begun to slack. But because of what she had begun to do, I encouraged her to continue. And I know that even though she was emailing her information, there were perhaps 20 to 35 other people who were also emailing their resumes and their accomplishments. They may not have been as consistent and steady, but they applied too. Because you see, the invitation had gone out. Every week I would be talking to her and finding out, um, well, how's the job search going? After all, she had two of my grandchildren. The invitation had gone out. I waited on pins and needles each week, waiting to hear some good news. First, I heard that she had an interview. And as Martha Stewart used to say, that's a good thing. She went in for a personal interview with the executive director and the person who was vacating the position because she was moving somewhere else with her husband. And there must have been almost two weeks then. My daughter didn't hear anything. And finally, my daughter received a call. It was the executive director of the Nuclear Medicine Technology Certification Board. Many had been invited, but she had been chosen. You see, in Matthew chapter 22, Jesus is continuing to tell parables of or earthly stories which were veiled stabs at the religious leaders of his day. For in Matthew chapter 21 and verse 45, you will read, when the chief priests and the Pharisees heard Jesus' parables, they knew that he was talking about them. 
Now here he is doing it again. The last parable involved killing and so does this one. A king had a wedding banquet for his son. He's excited about the fact that his son is going to get married. It's going to be a great day. And he wants his entire realm to experience the excitement with him. You see, the invitation goes out. Now, you and I know what it is to get invitations. You get them in the mail. You look at them. You say, oh, how nice. You, you put them away until later. You will pay attention to them maybe at some particular point. But there's a difference here. You and I don't get invitations from a president of a country. We don't normally get invitations from the governor or from a mayor. It just doesn't happen. I'm sure that if we got something from someone like that, we would first of all think that it would think it was a hoax. But the characters in the story of Jesus, that is actually part of God's autobiography with God and his people. They knew who the invitation was from. They knew that it was from the king of the realm. It was from the one who called the shots in their daily lives. It was from their ruler. And what was their response? Some just did not decide to come. For whatever reasons, they, they, they don't want to be involved. They don't think that it was all that important. They had better things to do, better places to go. There are people in this life, even though God is constantly inviting them to come to partake of the best of God's love, the best of God's grace, the best of God's forgiveness, the best of eternal life, that being in relationship with Jesus Christ brings for them, it's just not that important now. In the course of my ministry, I can remember meeting with hundreds of people. There were more pressing things to think about on their part. Well, after all, they got jobs, they got schoolwork, they got families, uh, they have rest, they have sports, they have relaxation and activities of busyness. They just don't have the time right now. And yet we notice in the parable that the king bothers to send his servants at least twice to those who had been invited. Historically, Jesus is referring to the prophets whom God had sent over and over again, or even the end of the prophets like John the Baptist. And some of them were mistreated and others with these prophetic voices were killed. But the king, because he desires for the hall to be filled, keeps sending servants. Before I came to Jesus Christ, the invitation had been sent out over and over again. I received it in a church that I was growing up. I received it from my mother and my father as, 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 as though it was in the whole house that they wanted to make sure that we received God's gift. I received it in a very special way from my older sister. And then I received it from a person who became a friend. His name is Ralph. And I'm sure that you can also give testimony to the fact that you too were given an invitation from various people, maybe from a family member, from a coworker, a, a ministers in your life. Perhaps in your mind, the Lord spoke to you. And on the other hand, maybe there are some people who are in your life right now and you are praying that they would respond to God's invitation. Could be a daughter or a son. Could be a grandchild or a cousin. Could be a mother or a father. Could be some co-worker with whom you have been working very closely. Maybe you are the very person whom God wants and you have been sent an invitation. You know, there are moments in our lives when God is speaking to us clearly. And like those who had been invited, 
we just don't have or we just don't want to make the time. There appears to be something that is so compelling that we need to find ourselves doing instead of um, responding to God's invitation. So important that we'd rather do something else. You know, there's a song that I'm, it's coming up in my mind that we used to sing in the church. It was really about telling the story of what God had done for you. It says, I believe I'll testify while I have a chance. I believe I'll testify while I have a chance. I believe I'll testify while I have a chance because I may not have a chance anymore. Well, we don't know when the invitations will cease. But as Jesus reveals in this parables, the point is not the ending of the invitations, but it is the constant vigilance of God's invitation. But thank God that God never is without a witness. God is not without a testimony to remind us of God's love and God's grace. God is not without a messenger to tell us that God desires to make our life full and meaningful. Remember what Jesus said in John 10.10. 10. He says, the thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy, but I have come that you might have life and that more abundantly. God is not tired of sending us on a journey. God is not without a person in apostolic ministry to tell us that everything going, is going to be all right, that we don't need to fret ourselves with the problems that continue to consume us. If you live this life long enough, these difficulties will continue to come. That when we make time for God's business, even in the midst of those things, they need to be primary in our lives. God's business needs to be primary in our lives. As the preacher Peter said on the day of Pentecost, and everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. That what we really need to do is to rest at the feast that God has prepared for those who will love him. That what we really need to do is to rest on the feast that God has prepared. And even as I think of my daughter who, because of her talents and her abilities, was able to be chosen for that position as a certificate services manager, but for those who were invited to the banquet, there was nothing they could have done to get in. They had no qualifications. They had no references. They only had that um, which um, was given to them, and that was the invitation of the king. The only thing that is able to get us into the presence of God is God's invitation and the power of the Holy Spirit to cause us to respond to that invitation. The only thing that was able to get a person in to the banquet was being clothed in a wedding garment. Now we need to understand that to be clothed in a wedding garment means that you have been to the right tailor. You've been to the right dress shop so that you're righteous when you come to the party. You can't come with your own clothes. You can't come with your own righteousness. Your own self-righteousness will not do in God's presence. You can't be able to say, well, I, I, I don't do this, I don't do that, I don't go there, I've been good the most of my life, I have a positive attitude, I have worked hard to do good, you can't come with that. The only thing that will do is to simply say, God, I believe in what you have done for me. You have provided the right clothes. I believe in the fact that Jesus Christ died for me on a crooked cross to gain my forgiveness and to gain my acceptance so that I can come to the party. 
And when that happens, you will not only have been invited, you will have been chosen. Now, I'm not sure why God causes certain people to come to faith in him. I have no idea. But I do know that it is wrapped up in God's foreknowledge as it is explained in Ephesians. But whether we understand that or not is not relevant. What is important is to make our calling and election sure by responding to God's invitation. If Jesus invites, come. As Job says these words that were included in Handel's Messiah, you'll be able to say, I know that my Redeemer lives. Are you simply the invited or are you also the chosen? Amen. Now we're going to spend some time in prayer. With confidence in God's grace and mercy, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. Gracious host, fill your church with the spirit of joyous hospitality. We pray for bishops, evangelists, pastors, teachers, church leaders, and all children of God as they invite others to your table of boundless grace. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Gracious host, as creation waits with eager longing for redemption, protect your creatures that are mistreated, restore valleys, mountains, pastors, and still and running waters. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Gracious host, as you set table in the presence of enemies, so bless the efforts of diplomats, international peace workers, and world leaders who navigate conflict among different peoples, tribes, and may, may they proceed with dialogue and understanding so that justice and peace prevails. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Gracious host, let your gentleness be known among those who are weary, ill during this pandemic. Strengthen doctors, medical care workers, and caretakers who see to their needs. Bring wisdom to legislators who can issue assistance. We now name them in this moment of silence. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Gracious host, when we are quick to judge outward parents, remind us how you clothe all in your mercy. We pray for ministries that provide needed clothing and other personal care assistance in this metropolitan township of Pike and others around this nation. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Gracious host, as we remember those who have died and are gathered at the heavenly banquet, comfort us with your presence. Assure us your peace at all times. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Listen as we call on you, O God, and enfold in your loving arms all for whom we pray. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, let the church say, Amen. Amen. As you came in into the parking lot, you have been given an opportunity to give an offering to the Lord through the church. So let us pray. God of mercy and grace, the eyes of all who wait upon you, and you open your hand in blessing, fill us with good things at your table that we may come to help all in need. 
through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer and Lord. Amen. Amen. And at this time, let us prepare for communion. Would you please uh, take the elements that you now have uh, with you and prepare them, both the bread and also the fruit of the vine. Our Lord Jesus Christ, in the night in which he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body, given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And then in the same way also he took the cup. When he had given thanks, he blessed it. He gave it to his disciples and it said, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Would you please repeat after me? Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy upon us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy upon us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. Together, let us take the wafer of the bread and let us eat together. And please take the cup and let us drink together. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, which you have received, strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Sister. Let us pray. We give you thanks, almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the healing power of this gift of life. In your mercy, strengthen us through this gift in faith toward you and faith fervent love toward one another for the sake of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Just a couple of announcements. Um, we continue our ministry here at uh, Salem Shalom uh, with a Bible study that takes place on Saturday at 10 a.m. in the morning. And if you'd like to participate in our Bible study, please uh, send a, um, a note to us or call in and uh, give us your, <clears throat> your email address and we'll invite you to the Zoom Bible study uh, or your telephone number if you don't have um, a computer or a, a, a smartphone. And you can participate by calling in uh, a particular telephone number. Um, and of course, we continue to have a worship here on site um, every single Sunday at 10.30 AM, And so we invite you to continue to join us. And now receive the benediction. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Go in peace. 
serve the Lord and honk your horns.